Hi, Ben. Hello. Thank you so much for having a chat with us today um, and agreeing to answer some questions. It was very brave of you. Um, I have looked through. There's no like trigonometry or far out geography questions, I promise. Um, That's good because I won't be able to answer any. <laughs> it's all in your area of expertise, um, which obviously is mortgage and protection. So start by telling us a bit about you, how you um, got into mortgage brokering, why and, and your career so far. Well, I got into banking around 2004 um, and I originally went through uh, as a personal banker and in the banks we used to have this thing called a non-advice mortgage seller, which basically clients would come in, they'd tell you which mortgage they want and you would set it up and you'd support them with their protection needs and everything. Um, and that kind of piqued my interest. I really enjoyed like going through the journey with people from A to B, um, helping them put the mortgage up, get into, into the properties they want to buy or remortgaging and doing the works they wanted to get done on the property um, and just decided like, do you know what? I think I might want a bit of a career doing this and helping in this, in this instance. So I did CMAP, which is the qualification you need for mortgage advising, um, became a mortgage advisor with a high street bank and then basically stayed with high street banks up until 2017 when I kind of felt like um, I wanted to go into somewhere where I could genuinely tailor or find solutions for people who are looking to buy or remortgage because of the banks they talk a good game about saying you know we tailor our products to our clients needs but you are tied to that lender so there's very yeah. few options if that client doesn't fit that lender's criteria you just can't help so i went the hold of market and began specializing in more complex mortgages so people with like complex credit histories complex income so kind of literally straight feet first into it um and then I, I say I've just sort of progressed and then I've gone self-employed under a, a company called Truth um, beginning of this year. And we're basically looking to just grow the business um, throughout with the team we've got um, and basically assist as many clients as we can buying their properties. Perfect. Um, I, think it, I think it definitely makes a big difference, doesn't it, going being independent to just working for one company, like you say, well, working for one bank really does set you a give you a limit of what you can do whereas yeah. being independent that opens that up so much well um, there's, there's so many solutions out there to, to be honest Rach it's like when you when you speak to some clients like it's easy to look on the high street and go okay they've got the lowest interest rate I'm going to go with them but there's so many elements that make up a part of a mortgage in terms of um, the income types what kind of income they'll take how long they'll do the mortgage for, what type of property they'll look at. I've had properties um, fall through because they've got solar panels on the property and that lender doesn't offer uh, a mortgage on, on properties that have solar panels. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And quite often um, people will ask me about lended, lenders' criteria and actually every lender has a different criteria, don't they? Even down to oh, yeah. a credit score, um, what your credit score is or, or where you need to be for that particular lender. Every, every lender has a completely, not completely, but every, every lender has their own criteria. Um, yep. You might meet one lender's criteria, but you, you don't meet the next lender's criteria. Yeah. And you see, you see a lot of people focus on the, the actual score number um, uh, with, with lenders and they, they sort of focus on the, I'm 999 points so I'm excellent. I, why can't I get this mortgage? That is a, such a small part of the overall checks that those clients do. Like, sorry, the lenders will do on clients. So, you know, there's an element to it that the bank might decide a certain type of employment is too risky for them and they won't lend to that kind of employment. They might decide that, and this is something that no broker or client will ever know, is you might buy a property that that lender looks at and goes, do you know what? We're overexposed in that area. So we're not going to lend on any more properties. So everything else matches. You meet all their criteria. You meet the credit score requirements. But because that lender is overexposed in that particular area, they're just not going to lend anymore. Yeah, they're diversifying their risk to, um, yeah, of lending. Um, so how have you seen the market change in the last year? Obviously, that's been a, a big time for you, being self going self-employed, um, obviously the pandemic, people being furloughed. There's been so many changes in the last year. What, yeah. what, what have you seen as a, a, a trend? A lot more purchases. 
So a lot more purchase. So stamp duty has massively encouraged people to start looking to move. Um, and, you know, I think we've seen property prices go up. I think it's about eight, around 8% property prices have gone up in the last year. I think it's a little bit higher at the moment. I think February to February, it was um, 7.8. And I think March to March, it was 8.3. Um, and then I think yeah. they're looking from April to April. Obviously, it's hard because last year the markets were closed more so in April. But Ooh. yeah, they're, they're saying it, it's edging towards the 9% which is, is a massive growth. It's such a huge growth. And I mean, the you know, stamp duty does massively help. And, and I've seen a lot more people try to find out what they can do, how they can borrow and, and try and get in, into the market before it does really become too far out of their spectrum to actually purchase a property. Because, you know, they're again, you know, people want to be on the ladder. Renting is kind of, for, to a lot of people, dead money because they're paying someone else, else's mortgage sometimes three times over to live in a property. It's not theirs so you know they want to try and look and investigate what they can do to purchase a property yeah definitely well thank you for keeping me up to date on different deals um i like i love receiving your your messages and your updates with um what's happening and um it really helps me keep my customers and my clients um informed whether i'm going around to do evaluation or viewings that i'm doing at a property um it's because the information changes so quickly, doesn't it? You you could offer yeah. somebody a mortgage today, and it, and actually, if the product be pulled tomorrow, and it it's not available anymore. So, um, yeah, from that side of things, it, it's really great to to be kept up to date. So, thank you for that from from my point of view. Um, we've had some questions in from our social media followers. Um, we put a post out obviously just say that we're having this chat and if there's anything that they wanted to ask you so let's have a look um the first one was my parents have just have said they'll help me buy my first place what is the best way for them to do it and i did go back and just ask because obviously i know for you that that is quite a general question um and i think from your point of view the, the thing that you would go back and ask would be what savings the, the parents had if it was a case of savings or if they own their own home obviously that would make a difference as well yeah so in this instance they do have savings but they also own their own home well, there's a couple of options that they can look at doing in this instance so obviously if they've got savings again they could um gift up to five percent or sorry minimum five percent um to their child who can then go out and buy a property with that obviously they can gift as much as they like um the lenders you tend to find much prefer it just to be a gift because obviously if they're having to pay that loan back uh, or sorry that gift back then that would be included into affordability and each lender has a different scale of how they calculate that um, being repaid to their parents not to say that the, the children don't have to pay it back if in the future they decide actually i'm in a much bit better financial position now i want to give my mum and dad back that money that's entirely up to them but at the application the lender wants to know that it is just a gift at that point. And parents um, have time to say that, don't they, Ben? Yes, they have to do a letter basically to sort of say um, that it's a gift, and they're not expecting they're not expecting the money back. Yep, cool. The other option is they've got is um, if they've got uh, equity in a property, um, you have got lenders out there who can put a charge against the parents' property, and that acts as like a deposit. Right. Um, so what that means is basically the child or customer buying um, can basically look to get up to 100% mortgage on the market. So what happens is they find a property, their affordability is um, calculated. Um, the lender says, right, we can offer you, say, 259 or 265,000 pounds. They find a property that's worth 265,000. The lender will put like a 20% charge of that purchase property yep. against the parents property so the only charge to the parents are the independent legal advice to, yep. so that they're aware of the impacts and um, what's going to what it means to have that charge against their property but there's no interest charged on the um, secure charge against their house but it means that they might not have to stump up the um, 10 15 20 30 pounds in cash for the um, child to go and purchase a property 
and obviously a much better option than the parents remortgaging to pull that money out to give them as well, isn't it? Much well, it's, it's, cheaper option. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you tend to find the interest rates aren't too, too dissimilar from the 5% rates out now either. <clears throat> so I think the last one I've done is 3.79% for a three year fixed rate. So it's not a, like a, an extortionate rate that they've got to pay. Uh, but it is a better solution, well, a, a more interesting solution than a parent's remortgaging because then they're restricted by their age. Um, they're going to be charged interest and fees for setting up that mortgage. Um, and then obviously a broker might charge the parents uh, a brokerage fee to set that mortgage up for them as well. Yeah. Whereas this yeah. way, yeah. it's all under one roof. Only the clients the broker's dealing with is going to get a, a broker fee if there is going to be one payable. Um, the charge goes on the parents' property. They've not had to dip into their savings. They're not having to pay any interest on the money against their property either. Um, yeah. And also their parents can have a mortgage against their property already. So what ha happened is the lender's charge would sit behind their yeah. main mortgage. Yeah, that's actually a great um, solution. And I think probably one that um, most people won't actually know is even an option. No, surprisingly in this area, I, was, I would have thought it'd been a, a lot more prominent but it's not because a lot of a lot of the parents i see who want to help their kids have are equity rich but not cash rich yeah um so this is a really really good solution and also the lender i've done it with um they don't have any loan to income ma uh, maximums so whereas you might hear some people say they'll do four and a half times or five times max um these guys don't have that uh, and the last case i actually did with them i think roughly about 6.6 .6 times salary Wow, that's really, that's really good. Mm. So it enables them basically to get on the market. They're going to be, initially, they're going to be paying the same amount of money they're paying on their rent at the moment. But then obviously as the years go by and they owe less, yeah, their monthly payments hopefully will obviously decrease as well. So it means they're actually going to start saving in the future. Yeah. And although they're uh, paying the same as that, they're paying it towards their own property rather than paying it towards the landlord's property. Yeah, exactly. And a landlord is probably paying, I say, a third of your rental payment. The landlord's probably paying that the third of that in the mortgage. So then, you know, it just means that you're buying something for yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the other options you have got is joint borrower or sole proprietor, where the client is a purchase of property, needs a bit of help with their um, affordability. So we can then look to maybe add the parents' income into a consideration. Obviously, the lender will take into account the parents' outgoings as well. So if they've got a mortgage, that will go on. But it could be enough to bump up the maximum loan to value or sorry, the maximum affordability amount that, that they can borrow. Excellent. I say it's well worth anybody in that position. I think it's well worth um, them coming to have a chat with you and and finding out what's going to be the best option based on their their circumstances. Because like you say, there's actually lots of interesting ways um, to work it that people may not have heard of or may not have considered. Well, that's it and there's no the thing is at the end of the day there's no fee for just talking to me so for the fact of like just going through the options and what is available um my job is to kind of almost like educate and inform on what's available out there if the guys don't decide to proceed then they're not going to get charged anything but until they know or are aware of what's out there you can't make an informed decision so you know contact your broker or hopefully myself um and then, you know, we'll go through exactly what you can borrow, what's available on the market. And then it's for you guys to then decide whether you want to proceed with it or not. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. So question number two, um, my mortgage deal is up in August. My husband has been furloughed for the last year and I've lost my job. Mm -hmm. Sorry will to hear we, that. Will, will, will we be able to remortgage? The standard rate that we'll go on to after August would be too high. So not sure of our options. So I think what they're saying is um, when their deals up, obviously when they revert back to the standard variable rate, it will be higher than what they're on now. Yep. Um, obviously, unfortunately, lots of people have been in this awful position in the last year yeah. where people have lost their jobs um, or been furloughed. So only been on 80%. And I say, if you are a couple and one of you's lost your job and one of you's furloughed, that's a massive reduction in, in your income coming in um, each month. So uh, what what would the options be there? Well, there's a, there's a couple of things would, you'd need to consider is obviously um, some of the lenders, they, they're getting really harsh in terms of the furlough money, uh, as they've probably seen. Um, now, places like Santander still allow to take into consideration the furlough income. 
there are some lenders that will um, take into consideration if the client has got a letter saying when they're returning to work, they will take that into account. Um, also, depending on that income, whether the affordability is there, we'd have a look and sort of see whether there's anything else in the market we can go and approach and um, speak to. If not, the best case scenario for you guys is literally just to transfer your deal with your existing lender because they don't do any of the affordability checks. They don't do any of the credit checks either. So yeah. it's useful to speak to the existing lender and say, right, this is what I've got at the moment. What deals have you got available for me to move on to? The lender will not disadvantage you by saying, oh, hang on a second. We need to check your affordability. You need to check your circumstances. And then we can offer you a deal. It doesn't work like that. With your existing lender, they will look at your loan to value and then say, right, on that loan to value, this is what's available to you. And you'll probably find August time, probably May time, you'll probably get a letter from your lender sort of explaining what deals are available to you. Um, and obviously, if you go through, like for myself, with product transfers, we don't actually charge because it's a nice, easy um, transaction to do. But you can also contact the bank, go online, even phone them up and just transfer the deal then. So you won't have to worry about staying on the standard variable rate. You won't be on that. You'll just change your current deal and move on to a lower rate if obviously your lender offers product transfers. Oh, excellent. So, um, sorry, going back a little bit on that. So from May, what's that, three months before, is that the sort of time where if people are looking to remortgage and um, and obviously if people are, re their deals coming to an end, that's the sort of time that they need to do it sort of three months before or start looking? Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, they always allow it about three months before and you tend to find your existing lenders will contact you three months before as well. Perfect. So question number three Um what is the best deal on the market at the moment? Oh, I guess that's quite, that's quite an over, over. That's a loaded, that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> so it all depends. I've got to be honest. I'm going to have to sort of flake out on this one yeah, because it all it's depends hard. to the individual. Um, I mean, if, if you're on, say, you're looking for a 5% deposit market, there's a certain best deal for that. If you're 60% loan to value, there's a best deal for that rate as well. And obviously... If you want a two-year fixed rate. I guess generally the best advice would be, although these mortgages are available now with the reduced deposit, generally, yeah. as a rule of thumb, the less deposit you put down, the higher the interest rate. That That's right, because you're more risky to the bank. So what they try and do is get their money back up front because if they have to repossess the property, there's more. it's more likely they may not make enough to cover their costs so they charge more up front to try and recoup that cost as quickly as possible whereas at 60 percent loans of value they're more likely to repossess and actually make the money back that they are owed plus costs i guess really the, the best answer to that one would be to get in touch with you go through their circumstances so that you can select the best deal for them and their circumstances it's very it's a very much personal thing, isn't it, with regards to mortgages, depending on your employment status and your credit history, your deposit um, and what it is that you're looking for. So I guess it's yeah, that's the good side for you. You really tailor make the, the options for people based on their circumstances. So really just that, to get in touch with you. That's it. And that particular client might say to me, Ben, I don't want any early payment charges. So then I'd go maybe somewhere like Coventry for their flex and save because there's no value of payment charges on it so yeah. you know you know the other guys might say to me i just want the lowest interest rate so then i'll look at the lowest interest rate because i work on advice and recommendation it's kind of a case of having that chat and that conversation to sort of yeah. really source what is ideal for them and what's so suitable for them and nine times so sometimes it does work out they might say to me i want a two-year fixed rate ben but i'm really really concerned about interest rates rising so i then go okay well maybe actually a five year would be better for yourself yeah. because you're protected against those interest rate rises. There's no changes in your circumstances expected in the next five years. Or like, for instance, I had someone who did just that and they had like 11 years left on their mortgage. When I spoke to them, they've got no intention of moving, um, no intention of having any changes or, or anything in their lifestyle. So I, in the end, I recommended a 10 year fixed rate, which they were really, really pleased with and went ahead with because it just meant, they're fixed for the 10 next 10 years yeah, they, they know plans. what's going to happen in that 10 years then don't they yeah they know what what money they're going to have to pay exactly perfect so number four are there many mortgages for buy to let at the moment and what deposit would you need to have for this 
there are lots and lots of buy to let mortgages. Obviously, again, it all down it's all down to the circumstances of the client and the property. Um, the minimum deposit you need at the moment is fifteen percent. Okay, that's that's lower than than uh, I thought. Um, I was gonna, thought you was going to say twenty twenty five, but that's that's good. Um, yeah, it's only just recently that's just come back into the market last week. That's good. Um, and obviously, buy to let mortgages are quite often in a lot of people buy buy to let properties in a company name, don't they? Um, yeah. So it's also looking at what mortgages you can get as the company name as well, isn't it? Yeah, you've got the options of personal and company. There are some lenders, it doesn't matter whether you're personal or company. Uh, when you set it up, you'll still get the same products. Um, now, obviously, there's certain benefits of having it in a limited company for sure um it's just a shame obviously you know the stamp duty it might be worth some people who've got properties looking to move it into um limited company to do it now that could be quite handy um but yeah there's you know it doesn't doesn't have too much impact on the, the products that are available to be honest with a lot of people cool perfect um again this one might be a bit so how many times your wages will mortgage companies do so um i guess again that does that vary it does vary and it also varies in the loan to value so once you get to like 85 percent loan to value some of the lenders will restrict the multiples that they'll do on your income now there's a couple of good things in the market that's just come out as i say i mentioned that 100 percent lender where they have no loan to income um so you know They'll just look at pure affordability. A nationwide have just come into the market for first-time buyers, um, 5.5 times for first-time buyers, which is a massive increase uh, for people. It's a 10% deposit. So it's a kind of a trade-off. You won't be able to put 5% down. You have to put 10% deposit down, but you you can look at 5.5 times your income. Yeah. So that's um, quite significant. But you do tend to find once you get over 85% loan to value, they reduce your multiples to maybe around the four mark. Um, whereas normally, on average, you're normally looking around four and a half times. But again, I would say if you speak to your broker, then what our job is there to really kind of squeeze out who can offer you the most amount of money. Because it's one thing me coming to you and going, like, Rachel, I've managed to find this interest rate, the best in the market but they'll only offer you 50 grand, you know, it's pointless. So my job is to kind of really squeeze out and go like, okay, these aren't the cheapest in the market, but they will offer what you need. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, does that answer that one, Duran? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. And again, I guess I know I feel like we've, we've, we've come, come back to it on every question really. Yep. Um, it really is a, such a personal thing that there's no, if you're sitting at home thinking, oh, what, what would a lender how many times my salary would a lender do i'm going to try and work it out um really the best thing to do would be to speak to you your advice is free so and, and from that side of things you can work that out for them you can see what lender would do the best in their circumstances um to get the most for, for people yeah exactly exactly that um, I think you have some examples of mortgages that you've done recently. Obviously, you spoke about the 100% mortgage. Is there anything yeah. else, any other mortgages you've done recently that you think, actually, that's a really good deal? People might not necessarily know about that or anything that you sort of want to get across to people? I think, obviously, that the 100% mortgage is the, is the big one that's uh, yeah. available out there. There's a couple of um, other deals that, again, are in the market that some people aren't aware of. Like, for instance, tenants, if you're renting a property and your landlord is happy to sell you that property if they're saying to you look i'll sell it to you for a reduced rate there are lenders out there who would class that as what we call gifted equity or concessionary purchase and that will go towards your deposit okay so you know i've had some clients who they're um they were looking at 10 percent loan to value 90 percent loan to value sorry okay. mortgage but the discount their landlord was going to give them meant I could look at a 75% loan to value product, driving down the amount of interest rate they're going to pay and making it a lot cheaper every single month as well. Um, but I do think it's important that some of the products and out there that is when you speak to a broker that you're happy to work with them and that you trust that they're going to have your best interests at heart and really sort of work yeah, that's for nice. you. Um, you know, I've had, I've had a case recently a client who unfortunately she suffered from cancer during the 20 
2020, uh, 2019, 2020 period. Um, and some of the lenders had, uh, borrowers she was dealing with had incorrectly recorded a late pay or sorry, missed payments on our credit report. So when I started speaking to her, she should have been on a rate of about 4.98%. But I've looked at the case, spoken to another lender and said, look, this is a scenario. Your criteria states, as long as she's not missed any payments, she fits your criteria. It's recorded as missed, but as you can as, as missed, yeah. but as you can see, it's actually just late. Yeah. Um, went through all the details with them and, and we've actually managed to secure 1.54% as opposed to 4.98. So Massive it, it's, yeah, it, it, it saved about 7,700 over the next five years. Wow. Yeah, that is so a big difference. It, it, it's a real big difference. And I do think, you know, the amount of schemes that are out there, that's why you want to try and work with a broker who um, isn't just going to go straight to the high street and then, if they turn around and say to you, look, I can't find anything on the market, don't hesitate to just try somewhere else. Even if you've got a couple, I mean, I've never been offended by anyone having two people working on the case. You know, I do think, you know, we ask doctors for second opinions. Yeah. So there are so many um, guys out there who get impacted by uh, a, a broker who would look at a case, potentially go to the high street and say, can't fit with Santander, can't fit with Halifax, I can't do it, sorry. Yeah. When that's not always the case, sometimes the cases just need help, like help to be built a little bit um, and lenders to be spoken to, to actually build a case, get it with a lender and, and sort of sometimes think outside the box. Yeah. And touch wood, and I'm always fortunate that there's been a few cases where I've had, uh, I mean, we saved someone £15,000 a year recently where they'd gone to one of the main brokers in the market they disappeared for about an hour, said they couldn't help the client because she was too old. She came to us. I looked at the circumstances uh, that she had, passed her to an expert who dealt with older case, uh, older client mortgages, um, saved a £1,300 a month on her mortgage. It's amazing. It's amazing. So there's, there's loads of different schemes out there. It's just getting someone who doesn't mind doing the legwork. And that's why, to be honest sometimes why you'll pay for a broker. I mean, you do get free brokers and there are some very, very good brokers who don't charge a fee. But obviously there are some who aren't going to make much money from it. So they want the real clean vanilla cases yeah. that will go through instantly for them. Yeah. Well, I think it really shows in speaking to you that you go above and beyond for your clients to make sure that you get them the best deal that suits them and like I say, just not dismiss things straight away and not just give them the first deal that you come across because it is the first deal you come across. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, so especially, especially in the current market and the unusual times that we've, that we're going through and have been through in the last year, actually it makes a massive difference to your, your monthly outgoings, the, the property that you can the purchase or um, yeah things that you can do, improvements you can make to your own property on a remortgage with more people working from home. It might be extensions and things to have offices or buying a bigger property to, to be able to work from home. So yeah, it really does. It sounds a bit dramatic, but it is life changing. It is life changing. It's a life changing experience. It is life changing. It, it, it's it one of the biggest life- purchases you'll ever do, isn't it? Yeah. And it makes a massive difference to somebody's life being able to to live comfortably whether that be financially because you found them a good deal or like say um being able to work from home or have that work-life balance because you've been able to to source them the right deal for them so yeah, we've got got a bit deep and deep and emotional then a bit a bit dramatic oh, no. <laughs> um <laughs> Thank you so much for answering all our questions today. Obviously, we'll post this video on all our um, social media channels tagging you in. Um, so if anybody wants further details, they obviously they can message us and we can put put yeah, them in contact with you. Or we'll also obviously tag all your stuff in. So if they want to get in contact with you directly, they can, can't they? Um, yeah. it's, it's obviously private if people have com- questions that or anything it's all private it's all confidential they can contact you um for free advice and and go from there yeah and i would say to them you know obviously it doesn't have to be just when you're looking to purchase a property if they want me to look at their credit reports and give them a bit of uh, an idea 
uh, and what they can do and, and challenge maybe because I've had a few clients with like state of six on their credit reports. I've said, no, that needs to come off. I can't see why you've had that. This is who you need to contact to get it sorted. Um, or they've got questions about the 5%. You know, it doesn't just have to be, oh, I'm l- looking to do a mortgage right now. I'm here to support. And actually, and ask- it's probably a good thing, Ben, that you, people do get prepared in advance, isn't it? Because yeah. if you have got anything um, adverse on your on your credit report you can work around that it sometimes maybe takes a bit of time you might have to give it six months a year or you can give them advice they do this do this and that's yeah. when you're then going to purchase in a year's time that's going to give you a much better chance and you're going to look at a better rate at that point if you do this in the meantime and they're not always right they're not always 100 percent right mm. yeah yeah that's good and i think most people don't really necessarily know that or challenge it they they see their credit report and it's from a credit agency you think that 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 must be right because because that that's what they've given you so um yeah like you say it's only you it's looking there. It and challenging it that um that they would even know that in the first place yeah well thank you ever so much for today and we look forward to um lots more market updates from you as well um <laughs> where i think tell. We'll either do maybe maybe we'll do a regular thing or say I know if when you post things on yours, we're more than happy to share onto our um social media pages as well so that we can keep our followers up to date as well with everything that you're doing. Um so yeah, thank you ever so much to say and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye.